because I think it deserves its own segment, a story that I talked about in my main segment. If Trump's impeached, then why can't a Senate trial start now? New theories on when Trump impeachment happens make no sense when followed to the logical constitutional conclusion. I have another follow-up story of some criticism of Pelosi, but I wanted to give this its own segment and read through it because I don't think I did it justice in just mentioning it in my main segment. The point is, many people are arguing right now that Trump has been impeached, that by simply voting, Trump has been impeached. Noah Feldman is a constitutional scholar. He was a witness for the Democrats, and he has argued before that's not true. Trump is impeached when the managers are sent to the Senate, when Pelosi announces the prosecution, the impeachment. Because she has not done that, Trump can say legally he's not been impeached. Now, the argument then from other people, including John Turley, the Republicans witness is that no, Trump has been impeached because they voted to impeach. The best argument in response to this from Noah Feldman in this wild, weird whirlpool of politics is that, okay, okay, then Pelosi has just lost all of her leverage. Because if you're arguing Trump is impeached, the Senate can just start right now and scrub it all. But no, Pelosi is refusing to turn over the documents, which means that he's not impeached. Let's read the story, and then we'll talk a bit about Pelosi and having her teeth removed. I mean that figuratively. Feldman writes, called me old-fashioned or naive, but I think my job is to explain what the U.S. Constitution actually means, no matter who likes it, who likes it or doesn't. That led me to explain recently that under the Constitution, as it was understood by the framers, and as it, is, and, and as it still should be understood today, impeachment isn't complete when the House of Representatives votes to impeach. Constitutionally, impeachment becomes official when the House sends word of that impeachment to the Senate, triggering a Senate trial. I want to stop here. I want to point something out. This process is likely due to the fact that there's you no know, TV, you know, back when the Constitution was written. And that means after they voted, somebody would have to send word, an official document saying it is done. Because we have TV, everyone knows they voted for it, but there's no complete formal process. So the easiest way to explain it is like, just because the police say they've decided to indict you doesn't mean they did unless they actually file paperwork to confirm all of this and move the machine forward. You can't just have law enforcement or politicians coming out saying, I did this when they didn't actually do it. Putting it this way, imagine if someone said, I just bought a Ferrari and the dealer is like, you've never actually given the cash to me. So no, you didn't. You can't go to a, a dealership and say, I have decided to buy the car. It's like, okay, now hand the cash to the dealer and the car is yours. No, I'm going to wait. Okay, well, they didn't buy anything. Nothing has been filed. Nothing has moved forward. But by all means, the argument here is that, sure, claim you've impeached the president because then you just officially announced the Senate now has the ball in their court. He says this, impeachment was originally understood to take place when someone from the House formally impeached the president at the bar of the Senate, which meant a member of the House formally stated to the Senate, that the president or judge or other officer was impeached. This practice lasted from the late Middle Ages until 1912. Since then, the House has instead sent a written message to the Senate stating that the House has impeached the defendant, a message that triggers the trial procedures in the Senate. Both versions, old and new, depend on the House officially communicating the fact of impeachment to the Senate. That communication has always taken place in short order after the House voted to impeach. The reason lies in the core element of what impeachment is by its very nature, a prosecution by the House that takes place before the Senate. If the message is not sent and the trial is not prosecuted, there is no genuine impeachment in the constitutional sense of the term. It also creates, in my opinion, and I'm not a constitutional scholar, a kind of constitutional crisis in that you can't have the House claiming to be impeaching people and then not allowing the process to complete. Trump has a right to, you know, defend himself to whatever capacity. I mean, it's impeachment. It's different. But the Senate has a right to hold a trial. If you are withholding that right, then we cannot say impeachment has occurred. Otherwise, you're creating a weird constitutional limbo. So yeah, complete the process, file the papers. Impeachment exists upon the filing. Until a few weeks ago, no one, to my knowledge, has ever suggested that impeachment could be complete even if there was no communication to the Senate. And no historic example of this new idea has been brought forward in the current discussion. The issue isn't merely theoretical or academic in the pejorative sense. It has major political implications for the current standoff between Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. According to the longstanding under, uh, understanding of impeachment, Pelosi has some modest leverage over the Senate trial. 
with the authority the House has given to her, she can control when impeachment officially occurs. Constitutionally, the Senate can't try Trump until she triggers the trial by sending a message about impeachment to the Senate. The Constitution gives the House, has the po sole power of impeachment, and impeachment means the power to initiate and conduct a prosecution in the Senate. But if Trump has already been impeached by House vote, then Pelosi has zero leverage because Senate can start the trial right away without waiting for the House to initiate or conduct the prosecution. After all, the House only has the power to impeach. If it has already executed that power, then the ball is already in the Senate's court. The Senate has the sole power to try the impeachment. So here's what I want to do. I want to show you the, the um, let's go down to the Florida Supreme Court addressing, actually, I, I want to read you this issue. I do want to get to this story. Pelosi has lost control of the Democratic Party to AOC and the lunatic left. The reason I do is because I want to talk about why Pelosi is literally doing nothing. And this is the Republican criticism. She is being basically forced into this and she doesn't want to do it. Let's read. They say, the form of words used by the House is impeached, doesn't redefine impeachment to make communication to the Senate unnecessary. Impeachment is now and, has al and always has been, by definition, a House-led prosecution in the Senate. Whether in the old days or now, impeachment happens when the Senate is presented with the act of impeachment, which triggers the trial, as the Senate rules say. Anything else would make no sense because it would allow the Senate to start, the tr start without, the house, without the House managers there to prosecute it. <laughs> okay, so literally, think about this. If Pelosi claims and the Democrats claim Trump is impeached, then the Senate can say, okay, we'll start a trial, but there's no prosecutors. There's no one there to actually s s s prosecute Trump. In which case, the Senate's holding a trial with no prosecutorial management. So there's no trial. Literally makes no sense. The only logical conclusion is that until the paperwork is filed, Trump has not been impeached. But check it out. He says, the Florida Supreme Court actually addressed this issue in 1868 after the governor was impeached and claimed he hadn't been because there was no quorum in the Senate. Florida law doesn't control, of course, but the Florida court went through all the sources. It concluded, and here's the quote, it thus appears by ample precedent and authority that an impeachment is not simply the adoption of a resolution declaring that a party be impeached, but that it is the actual announcement and declaration of impeachment by the House through its committee at the bar of the Senate to the Senate, that it does thereby impeach the officer accused, which proceeding is at once recognized by the Senate. I tell you what, the Florida courts have already said it. The president is already there. But if you need a Supreme Court ruling, by all means, file, and they will likely follow suit with historical precedent. Trump has not been impeached. It's such a weird attempt at like a semantic victory. I think it's fair to say for all intents and purposes, Trump is impeached. But I think legally speaking, it's important if the Democrats want to maintain their leverage. And, and the point is, Nancy Pelosi needs to put the documents forward. And I'll tell you why. The longer she drags her feet, the worse it will hurt the outsider Democratic candidates. And maybe that's the game. Maybe Pelosi is at war with the insane far left of her party. And this brings me to the main point. Not that I necessarily need to rehash the impeachment argument. Take a look at this. Steve Scalise. Is it Steve Scalise? Am I getting his name wrong? Am I? Am I? Am I? Yeah, Steve Scalise said Pelosi has lost control of the Democratic Party to AOC and the lunatic left. Why would, why would Nancy Pelosi withhold the articles of impeachment? Well, as it's been stated before, if she withholds them until early next year, Bernie Sanders will be forced to step off the campaign trail. Other outsider Democrats and, senatorial, uh, and Senate, candidate, and Senate uh, senators will also be forced to. You know who won't? Pete Buttigieg, Joe Biden. This may be a play to regain control of, a, a, an aspire, of the party. The party is fractured, it's fallen apart, and the establishment refuses to lose. This is an establishment play. If you were to ask me, I think this makes the most sense. I think they're making a play against Bernie Sanders. I think this is an attempt to stop Bernie's revolution or whatever it is. But I'll tell you this, man, I disagree with Bernie on policy. I used to be a big fan of him because of his sincerity. I think he's given that up to pander. I think he's playing the game. But I will tell you, first and foremost, I will defend Bernie Sanders' right to campaign and preach his message to the American people, whether it's right or wrong. And it is the job of the Republicans, moderates or otherwise, to counter that narrative. And if you can't do it, then you lose. Welcome to, you know, a constitutional republic, which, which is run through democratic institutions. Bernie can preach his message. And if it works, he wins. You know what? 
if he's got a cheap message like free stuff, that's what you think, well then, then you're at a disadvantage, but you got to fight hard for it. I certainly don't think shady underhanded games is the way to win. So I would rather see a legitimate campaign held by Bernie, Tulsi, and other outsider candidates, Yang. Yang's also not going to get held up in the Senate. I'd rather see a legit argument between Bernie Sanders and, and Donald Trump as opposed to him being forced out of the race due to Nancy Pelosi playing games. I think that's what we're looking at. And I think, I think, you know, maybe there are a lot of, you know, right wingers and, you know, Hillary fans who are laughing because it works out for them. But I think it's really funny when I see people like Kyle Kalinske, you know, I think he's a good dude, but he says stuff like Pelosi should absolutely withhold the documents. No, dude, if you like Bernie, this is going to backfire on him. So no, it's a bad idea. I think it is a fair point to make that whether it's intentional or not, Nancy Pelosi is doing nothing to hurt Trump at all. But everything, that, everything she's doing will end up hurting Bernie and other sen senators who are running for president. Keep that in mind, that they're scared of AOC. She didn't want impeachment. Ask yourself why they did it in the first place. Pelosi resisted. They're not going to win. It's helping Trump. Maybe. Just maybe. It's this. So I think this is a good addendum, but uh, I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up in just a few minutes, and I will see you all shortly.